Okay, so we're going to make this short and sweet. If I can get my phone to stop bouncing here. All right, so here we are, July 22nd, y'all. And um, I know everybody's been so super busy with the summer. So I think this training is in perfect timing because we're coming to the end of the busy part of summer, hopefully, for most of us. I know for me, we are. We're coming back into routine, and I'm super excited about that. Um, just to be able to really focus and get some things done, get whatever you're working on, launching, um, rebranding, anything that's a big project in front of you right now, maybe looking to build up client base, whatever it is you're looking to do. Please let me know in the group if you are at all finding use from the launch plan. Now, I know you're also waiting on the little um, screen share training that I'm going to give you for that too, but it really is pretty self-explanatory at this point and I want to know if it's been helpful for any of you. I'm using it for my um, academy launch, and I'm loving it. It's really keeping me on track with what to write. So, like, when I sit down for the week to do, fill out my little date book, I pull out that week's kind of pre-plan from that yeah. launch plan. Yeah. So, it's really helping to keep me on track. So, I'm loving it. But I want to know what y'all think, because I, I think different sometimes. So, here we are in the last half of our year, and... I think we do this with the calendar. We do this with our lives where it gets to be, you know, I'm this old now. I don't know if I can really finish that project. I don't know if I can finish, you know, pursuing that calling or that dream or building that business or whatever it is that we do in our minds with age and timelines and dates. And I think we do that in July and August. We, we say, I'll wait till next January or I'll wait till the new year to work on this or pursue this dream or pursue that thing that God has for us to do. And I want to encourage you tonight, don't do that. If he gave this thing to you, especially if he spoke a word or he spoke a, I know with me, sometimes he gives me outlines. He'll give me the whole outline or the whole kind of rough draft of something. If, unless he's telling you that this is not the time, don't give up and put it on the shelf until next year. We've got, all this time left in this year. And I want to sh share with you how I think you can make some really great things happen this last half of the year without overwhelming you. This isn't going to add anything to you. My goal here is that this is going to kind of give you the roadmap for what you already want to do, what's already in front of you. So I found, I kind of just heard from him these five things. So what you're going to do is you're going to go into the rest of the year thinking one thing. Okay, just think, what's one thing? Yeah, and when you think that, and you probably already know what that is, I know for me what that is, is the academy. It's, it's that one thing that's got to be done. It's, it's bugging me because I don't want to do it. I'm self-sabotaging here recently. I'm overwhelmed because I'm still not well, and oh my gosh, I won't be able to handle it because I'm not well, and I'm overthinking, and yet every time I try to go and plan something different and say, you know what, I'm going to put it on the shelf. This, I'm preaching to you guys because this is something going on with me personally in my spirit and in my workload right now. He keeps saying, no, you will do it. You will do it for September. You're doing it in September through December. And so you guys, you have that thing too. What is it? Now, when you look at that one thing and that one thing is in front of you, there are five things you can do to move you into that one thing. And I'm going to share those with you really quickly here. Number one, what one thing can you offload? Ooh, so yeah. what one thing, yeah, so what one thing that's already on your plate can you either delegate, which, you know, give it to a family member or someone who's going to help you out with it, or outsource, delegate it to a professional that you pay to help you with that thing. Um, maybe it's just something you need to say no to, just get the guts to say no I don't have the time to do this. I've already served my time or I've already helped you guys with that. Or I've already, you know, it could even be something habitual that you're saying no to. Um, and then there's also, you could kind of think of it this way. What one thing could I finish? So a way to offload something could be to finish it, right? Sometimes that's what we need to do. There's something in front of us that's unfinished and it's weighing on us. That's happening to me right now too with Casey's website. That darn website is not done. <laughs> so I've got to offload that website to move into the enrollment for the academy. Okay, so this is what you're doing with, with your load. Now, 
when you go to outsource, it doesn't necessarily have to be something in your business. For me personally, this year, first year ever that family and I have been able to do this financially, hubby and I split the cost 50, 50. We hired housekeepers. Woohoo! Anybody who knows us knows that we are clean freaks. Anybody who stayed at my house, like Trish, she knows. Um, Casey knows just because she's close to me and she knows me. I'm a clean freak. And it was, I think that's why it took me so long to get to this point because I felt like no one could do how well we do it. And what about the special chemicals I use or the non-chemicals I use? You know, will they be okay with using that? And all these things, you know, oh, I could spend that money on so much better things. I could pay off more debt because that was my big financial goal this year. No, that has been the best possible one thing I could have delegated this year. I've delegated a few others, but that's the big one because that happens every single week now. Three out of the four weeks of the month, I have a housekeeper come in. So for you, what could that be? Okay, so maybe I know some people it's hiring out the cooking. You, you have a meal service, bring your meals, or you hire out the grocery shopping by using the online thing and having them deliver it or you pick it up. Um, there are so many ways to do this now. Nowadays, it's easier than ever to offload one thing. So the number two point, and I know, Wendy, when you do have to go, just go, Wendy. Don't worry about it. Okay. Um, it will it matter for our recording if you're not here? Um, it might. Yeah, because I, I, I have to Zoom at nine. Okay, well, hopefully I'll be done. Number two, I think I can get this done. What is one thing that you need to learn? So the first one was offload. The second one is learn. What one skill or program could you intentionally learn quickly? You know, what, what's one is when you think of this, don't think of something that's going to take a 12 week course or a 16 week intensive. We're talking about for me personally, and I, I got to use my stories because that way I can move faster here and relate to it. But for me that year, this year, that was Thinkific. I needed to learn Thinkific to move the academy curriculum to a functional, effective, efficient place to be able to sell it this fall with all the new packaging and things that we're doing with the academy. So I had to learn it. I had to, I actually had to try one that didn't work that I spent $800 on, lose a little bit of that money, go through all the headache. I cried for a month in January. Remember, Wendy? It was terrible. I, I remember telling you guys here. Um, I had to push through that skill. That was a skill that had to be learned to move effectively forward in the big goal. So remember, we've set our big goal, and these are the little steps, the one step in that one area that moves us into that big goal. Right. Okay. And sometimes it is more than one skill or program and that's okay too, but not if it's going to paralyze us one at a time. So think if it had to happen and then Squarespace could happen or vice versa. I'm trying to remember now what I did first. Um, you know, different things have to be done first. There's so many things I want to be learning right now with affiliate marketing, using our websites with, uh, oh, design, you know, I'm doing a lot of design right now with redoing my cookbook and all that. So many things I want to learn. But I have to pull myself back and remember, no, I got to get this skill down good, get it into a habit before I move into learning the next thing or I have to learn everything and nothing is actionable. Nothing's been put into yeah, this ongoing um, effective way of using what I've learned. Okay, so learn one. What one thing between now and the end of the year could you learn that you're like, yes, that is exactly what I needed to learn to be able to consistently be bringing in money, reaching my goals, and be operating in my calling. Number three, what one thing could you invest in? Uh, for many of us, this is a course that teaches us something. Maybe it is that software that we need to, you know, uh, automate or systemize what we're doing. Uh, for me personally, sometimes it's, count, uh, not counseling, um, consulting or coaching. Um, and I know you guys have done that as well. Maybe it's, um, oh, hubby and I just bought a day's uh, retreat thing to go see uh, Tony Robbins this fall. Oh, wow. Yeah, Tony Robbins and uh, Robert from the Shark Tank and Gary V are going to be all together in Phoenix, and we bought into that. My husband and I, and it was very cheap, though. It was a very affordable investment. But that, that was my thing this year. I'm going to do something for me to build my character, my personality, my, um, those skills, and my belief, and so I'm going to the Christian one, what is it called, GLS, 
in August next month. I'm so super excited. My neighbor and I, she's a good friend of mine. We go together. That's our new little tradition. And it's here at our church in Tucson. So we don't have to travel. And then in November, I'm going to go with hubby to Phoenix to that retreat. So what about for you? For some of you, it might be you need some coaching or consulting, but it might be guru time. I don't know. Everybody is different, right? You just, it depends on the season you're in and what your needs are. But what one thing could you invest in? It might not even be that kind of thing. It might be a new computer. I know earlier, uh, late last year, that was a need for me. It wasn't a luxury. It was a need. Everything was taking too long. Well, when we work online and our whole income is dependent on how quickly we're moving and how efficiently we're moving online, a $1,000 computer that I bought that's paid off now, I got it through HSN and they do payments and there's no interest and you just pay it off. Um, man, it has changed, you know, kind of revolutionized the amount of time it takes me to get things done now based on that old computer I had been working on for a few good years. Yeah. So it might be a piece of equipment for you. So think about what it, what's the biggest thing that you could invest in that's holding you back from that big goal. Number four, what one thing can you celebrate this one is always hard for me. We don't stop. I don't stop. And earlier today, because I beat myself up over this financial thing, it's really a big growth area for me these couple of years is my finances. And today I was looking at the 0% card I'm paying on, one of my three cards. And man, I just want to get out of debt, y'all. And I'm looking at it, and I've been so discouraged because my other one, I've been charging little by little well, I need to pay this bill or I need to pay this, you know, get that $29 course or whatever. And those little things do add up. And so I've, I've been kicking myself like you're not down as far as you were supposed to be this year. In fact, you're back up to square one. Well, on my 0%, I haven't charged a dime. So it's what, uh, six months later now, and that sucker's down over a grand. So I got pretty super excited about that and I stopped and I celebrated. I was like, you are $1,000 down. Yeah, in the big ocean of debt, that drop in the puddle doesn't sound like much, but it was meeting the goal I set. That was my goal, was to see it go down. That was, I had no numbers goal. It was just, let me just see it go down this year <laughs> instead of up like it does every year. So we got to stop and celebrate. What one thing or accomplishment or behavior change? For many of us, it's a behavior change. Do you deserve some credit for? Stop. Celebrate that thing. Give yourself the credit that you deserve. And then number five, one more one thing, okay, towards the big thing. What one new habit can you create or establish in the sense of a daily discipline to move you from here, wherever, whatever it is you're feeling about here. I know for me earlier in the year, I was feeling quite stuck. I'm not feeling stuck anymore, but I do tend to sometimes feel overwhelmed. So to move me out of overwhelm, and not feel this overwhelm all the time, what one habit can I create or establish or strengthen? Maybe I've already started it, but I need to strengthen it. I, maybe I waver, and I do, and then I don't, and then I do, and then I don't. So what one habit can we focus on to be that daily discipline that strengthens us and moves us forward towards our big goal? And that was what I wanted to share with you guys, is that this last half of this year, and ooh, we made it, Wendy, we have like five minutes. Um, the last half of this year is just as important, just as exciting. Why do we do that? Why do we think January is the most exciting month of the year? It's not. It's really not. We're usually in January. We're trying to get above the water, catch our breath from Christmas and holidays and family nonsense and you name it, right? From the winter. Family so, nonsense, right? Yeah. So July can be a pretty exciting time. And I don't know about y'all, but we've got another entire week, actually week and two days of this month left. And I intend to make the rest of July stupendous. Like I'm going to finish Casey's website and I'm busting through some serious sickness stuff over here. Um, if I got to do it from my laptop in my bed, I'm going to finish Casey's website and I'm going to have that sales page up gulp for that big business in a box offer I'm, I'm making. And that's my big goal in the next uh, seven to nine days. In addition awesome. to the, the normal, the normal stuff, right? Casey's site is almost done though. So I'm kind of cheating on that one, but it's still, there's just still a few hours left, I think. So you guys sit and kind of do this little outline for yourself. Just kind of that, what we just went over, do a little self-assessment, jot it on paper. After each of those categories, what can you offload? What can you learn? What can you invest in? What can you celebrate? 
And what can you build into a new powerful habit that's going to move you from here closer to that big goal? And I think we're all going to have a very exciting end of our year. We are not, this year is not over yet. We have a, a good amount to go. Well, that's right. 